Welcome to Podcast 15. Wow, we're already here at Podcast 15. This is fantastic. Uh, I appreciate everybody taking the time to, to, to write in and um, uh, have some suggestions for me. Uh, and that's what today's podcast really is about, is uh, I'm trying to whittle down my list of suggestions. And if you do have more, please write to me and you can, you can send them to cagecoaching at gmail.com and uh, I'll add them to the list. And, and uh, the last few ones have, have come off of, uh, off of that list. And that's where today's is as well. So today's podcast is degree of application and, and how to increase that. And where that stems from is you've heard throughout all these podcasts is, ah, oh, the technique's the same. This is the degree of application changes. So what the heck does that mean and, and how, how, can I, how can I increase it? How can I get better at that? So the fundamentals are the fundamentals. And you've heard me yapping about that throughout all of these podcasts, right? The fundamentals are the fundamentals. So those aren't going to change. It's within each one of those fundamentals on making each one of them more precise. That's what we're looking to do. So whether it's, whether it's breaking or throttle or eyes or body position or, um, or the one that everybody wants is lean angle, right? It's, it's how, how to make it more precise and more fine. And this is honestly, this is a very tough one because it's, it's both subjective and objective. It's subjective because a lot of your personal personal feelings and the way that you manipulate the bike come into play. But it's also very objective, right? You can look at it and go, okay, um, your slowest point of the corner was too early or too late because your degree of application wasn't where it needed to be or whatever the situation may, may be. So not only do you have the feelings that you have on the bike, but you also have those report cards to be able to judge what your actions have been. And, and we'll get into that quite a bit. So <clears throat> we'll, we'll start off. We'll start this off with, um, so what, what does this mean? The technique is the same and the degree of application changes. What that means is, is, is that your, your technique is going to get more precise. It, it, it's going to get more exact. And we'll use braking as an example. So let's say um, you're going to go to the brakes. And normally you go to the brakes at, and we'll make it up, you go to them at 5, 10, 40, 60. 5, 10, 40, 60. 5, 10, 40, 60. But then you're overslowing some of your entries. Um, you're not matching your brake pressure to the radius of the corner. See, that's your report card, right? It's where you let off the brakes. That's your report card. So now you've got a report card for that, and it's not matching up. Okay, so I need then to change my degree of application to match that radius of the corner. So now what we can do is if you're overslowing it, you've grabbed too much brake pressure. Notice how I use the word grab. You grab too much brake pressure and you've overslowed. So we, we, need our, we need our degree of application to be more precise, more fine. So now instead of going to the brakes at that 5, 10, 40, 60, you might go to the brakes at 5, 10, 12, 15, 20, 25. Oh, where I let off the brakes there was great because that's what that radius dictated. So... It's the same action, just more precise. So let's take a look at that, that 5 to 10% break, right? So instead of 5, 10, it's now 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 instead of 5, 10. So your action becomes more precise. I know, it sounds so simple, right? You're like, well, gosh, I know that. Well, it's actually very, very hard to execute. So it's, it's being more exact and more precise with the same action. There's a couple stories that go along with this, and you've heard me talk about J.D. Patinsky, one of our, one of our um, kind of our Rick ambassadors um, that we ride with, and, and he's been a big help at the Rick development camps. And he talks, that about, he talks about this a lot, and you've heard me mention this story before, which is he'll get guys that call up and say, oh, man, I want to shoot with your, you know, your Delta Force guys or whatever it is because you know, they have the secrets. And he's like, sorry, bro, they're just better at the fundamentals than you are. And what that means is right? they're more precise with the same actions. And this is why we have to keep continually practicing this and, and getting better at it. It's the same thing with riders. Uh, you watched Rossi this weekend um, uh, at this uh, Las Grand Prix. And <clears throat> I won't say who won the race, but when you watch the races, you compare them to, say, um, Lorenzo, is Lorenzo um, ran too much lean angle for too long and essentially burned up his tires. 
where Rossi was able to run maximum lean angle for a shorter amount of time and get the bike in and out of the corner better. Uh, it was a great track that suited him. So it, it was the same technique, it's just Rossi's degree of application was more precise and, and more fine than Lorenzo's was. So the fundamentals are the fundamentals. It's how precise you make those fundamentals. So you're like, okay, great, wonderful. How the hell do I do it? Let's get into it. First one is let's be present, right? Let's be present in the moment. Actually have a plan for what you're going to do. If you want a 100% result from something, then, then you need to work on that one particular thing at 100%. So whatever this action may be, whether it's your initial throttle, your roll off of the throttle, your go to the brakes, your release the brakes, your, your body position, we're going to work on one thing at a time. And again, if you are if you're, if you listen to our last one, one of the last ones with uh, off the bike training, a lot of these things you absolutely positively can work on in your car, whether it's moving your eyes or brakes or throttle, and you can start to build some of that um, habitual movements. So first one is be present, have a plan. And now, and now the next one is let's have some report cards for what you're doing. There, here comes the objective part of this. So you're going to do something that's very subjective, right? You're going to move, you're going to have different movements, and you're going to try to try to make some of your, your motor controls different. Um, but we need to have some report cards, some objectiveness to gauge whether that is that is right or not. So first one, be present. Let's have some report cards um, on it as well. If you, let, let's, let's dive through a couple of these. So let's look at our brakes. Let's say you want to make your initial braking less abrupt. Well, you can do this sitting in your driveway. I like to see you practice some of these things off the bike. It's actually very difficult to do some of these things on the bike when you're in the moment. You've got to build these off, off the bike. It's, it's funny. Again, I'll use JD as a great example. I, it, it, so JD, I talk about him. I say, JD, you're going to go do a shooting demonstration. I said, do you just pull your gun out and start shooting? He goes, oh, no, I dry fire for about 50 times before I do a demo. It's the same thing when I go and ride every day. If I go to ride on the track, I'm going to work on my, my braking uh, before I go out on the track, right? I want to get that, that feeling of how I go to the brakes and how I release the brakes and what the grip is of my, that current condition of my front tire and the grip of the track. So <clears throat> building, building that movement uh, literally off the bike is actually a bigger deal than you think. It's probably something that you haven't thought about or haven't even worked on. So if it's your initial braking, you can roll your bike back and forth in your garage and you can work on your initial braking. You can just feel those pads up against the rotors and you can just feel in that initial percent, that initial one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And you can start to do that. So now if you got the one, two, three, four, five right, now even in your driveway, you can work on one, two, three, four, five, and then you can start to build more brake pressure, make the hand move slower and build brake pressure. Now you can hold it, hold your fingers there, bike's not moving, hold your fingers there and slowly release that brake lever, working on how much more fine your motor controls are. This is one that we cannot, we just can't work on enough. It just, it just never ends with this. We can do the same thing with our throttle. Initial throttle, you literally can start your bike up, do it outside your garage please, start your bike up and you can work on your initial throttle and you can work on just, just going to the one to two to three to four to five percent throttle to feel how that throttle picks up. You can work on it right there as well. Again, try tightening up your stomach muscles when you do this. And you can start to work on how precise that needs to be. And when you start to be able to do these off the bike, man, it shortcuts the learning curve when you get onto the bike. So same thing with your body movements. And, and body movements, we see a lot of abruptness, a lot of abruptness. And again, you can do this off the bike as well. You can literally sit there and go from foot peg to foot peg. You can go from side to side, off the bike, off the bike. But you can sit there and go from left foot to right foot, left foot to right foot, left foot to right foot, and build some muscle memory to feel how the weight goes onto your feet. Now do it slower. Do it more precise. Feel what your stomach muscles are doing. Give yourself some report cards for what's wrong and right. Then you can get on your bike and go from side to side and feel what it does. So let's get some of these actions going off the bike. It'll make a massive difference when you actually go ride the bike. So we talked about initial brakes. We talked about some end of braking, some initial throttle. Same thing with our apexes and direction. So now that you are riding, 
you can look and say, wow, where's my slowest point of the corner? Where am I letting off the brake? And now you can start to manipulate that, that degree of application. And you can do that by looking at how much neutral throttle you have. By looking at how much neutral throttle you have, it'll tell you what your degree of application is and, and whether you're being um, as controlled as you need to be, whether you can be lighter and longer at the end of your braking, whether my trajectory as I turned in is correctly. So how much neutral throttle is a big deal? Yes, I know some corner, the radiuses are so darn long that you're not able to, to um, you're gonna have neutral throttle. But the idea is we do wanna to try to minimize that as much as we possible, possibly can. So you got some good things there on how much neutral throttle. Another great report card to make. Now you can look at the degree of application of both end of braking and initial throttle and turn in, again, making it arm all more subtle with a report card. The one, the one that is really probably the toughest one is lean angle. This is a tough one. So I think the big one with lean angle is one, figuring out where maximum lean angle should be. So where should maximum lean angle should be? Well, it should be maximum, you should have maximum lean angle at the slowest point of the corner. Why? Because it's the slowest part of the corner. And, and all you're asking of your tires at that point is to lean over, right? You're not asking for a lot of brake pressure, you're not asking for a lot of throttle, throttle force um, or throttle pressure. You're just asking the bike to lean over and that's what the tires are designed to do at that point. So lean angle, first of all, where's maximum? It should be at the slowest part of the corner. And, and now that we got that, how do we start increasing lean angle? Well, we start increasing lean angle two ways. One is speed, right? The faster you go, the more lean angle you have to, you have to, be, you have to uh, run. You have to run more lean angle as you go quicker. And so you can take a, a nice big long radius corner, a big, big long radius corner where you're off the brake, but you still can't accelerate because you can't see your exit or takeaway lean angle. And at the same lean angle, you can increase the throttle. You can, and when I say increase the throttle, it's, let's, it's like going from 10% to 12% or 12% to 15%. It's enough to bring some speed up at the same lean angle. Here's the key, making sure that inside arm is relaxed. If you try to tighten up that inside arm, you've just locked the steering head in and the front wheel's not gonna go where it wants to go. And you'll actually take away lean angle at that point. So how to increase that lean angle? One is you can, you can pick up the throttle in the middle of those longer radius corners. That will certainly get it. Longer, lighter end of braking, right? That'll increase your roll speed as well to increase that lean angle. And you certainly can counter steer a little bit too. So by pushing on that inside bar, what's that do? It increases lean angle. Of course, you wanna do it in a very, very small amount, but it'll start to get you to have a little bit more lean angle. That inside arm's gotta be relaxed. As soon as you tighten up that inside arm, thing is not gonna to wanna to lean over anymore. So I think the big one on lean angle is let it come to you. Let's look at your grip conditions, right? Let's look at the track conditions. Let's look at your grip. Um, let's see what the corner radius has to offer. Let's, let's work on something like that where the radius really dictates that. And there's some really great corners for that. There's some corners that also don't really work really well for that. That really will come naturally as your speed comes up. So that's actually, um, that's actually a good problem. If your trajectory is right, let lean angle come, that's for sure. So, all right, so degree of application, how to, how, to, how to increase it. And, you know, to kind of wrap this up is we realize, right, these fundamentals have stayed the same. It's just the degree of application changes. They're more precise. It's the same action, but that action is more precise, and it's breaking it down more and more. And <clears throat> let's get some practice going off the bike. If you can start to do these things off the bike, and start, and start to make them more precise, it'll, make, it'll shortcut that learning curve when you do get on the bike and you start to actually understand what you're doing. Let's be present, let's be in the moment we're gonna do this, let's have a plan to do it, and let's give ourselves some of those report cards of how we're doing all these things. So, degree of application, how to increase it. Uh, very tough one, uh, but I've given you some good things on, on pretty much all the controls to be able to make that happen and also some things with lean angle. So let's try it.